Hi, it's Rich Tejada from Keys to Fitness. I'm here in uh, Ocotepec, where Kathy, my girlfriend, and I have had a nice 20-minute uh, walk, and we did about a 10-12 minute workout. But I want to uh, have a little discussion with everyone that's watching about uh, working out and injuries that you might have. And it's geared towards people that are over 50, and that's basically, I think, uh, who I train and a lot of the people that watch my videos are probably a little bit older. So the things I want to talk about, first I want to just mention that I have my Cedar Key hat and this recent uh, hurricane in Florida blew out the town of Cedar Key where I first got my opportunity to run a gym uh, probably 10, 11 years ago. And uh, six years ago a hurricane blew the town out then. Uh, ruined uh, my girlfriend's cottages and her house. It was catastrophic. And then it happened again uh, this past month. So people are struggling to repair stuff. There was probably five, six feet of water through the town. Um, it's, it's been an awful thing. So I just want to give a shout out to the people in CDP where, and where my career started. So the point of the video is to discuss working out with injuries. Okay, so I'm going to discuss the ones that I have and how I work around it. So I'll start with uh, the one that affects me the most psychologically, and that's my Achilles tendon right here. So I used to be a marathon runner. I was a pretty good marathon runner. I, I never qualified for Boston, but I was a 5K champ at my club and could run 18-minute 5Ks, which is about under 6-minute miles. And I was a county champ as a kid in high school and was sixth best in New York State. So I was a pretty good runner. So about 20 years ago when I ran my last marathon, I was training a gal and I wasn't training enough. And I ran a 20 miler without doing enough work. And that blew my Achilles. So it's never been right for over 20 years. So I was still running on and off these last 20 years. And about three weeks ago, no, three months ago, we were at the beach, and I just did a 50-yard jog, not a run, in the sand, and I could feel the Achilles go. So it's still bad, uh, so I'm not doing any running. All I'm doing is walking. Now, I'm trying to rehab it with the things that I learned online uh, from good physiotherapists, and I'm hoping that's going to get better, but I'm assuming probably my running career is probably over. So that's just one of the issues. The other issues are I have two really bad shoulders. There's a rotator cuff tear in here, uh, which has never been operated on. I rehabbed it myself, so I have very good range of motion, pretty good strength, um, but I don't do a lot of overhead movements. Um, I was recommended that to not do a lot of overhead press, so I do other things for shoulders. So, and the other shoulder, I don't know if there's a rotator cuff tear, but I probably have either bursitis or arthritis in both shoulders. So that limits my ability to do uh, many, many push-ups. I can still do 20 push-ups, maybe a little bit more, but I'll end up feeling pain for a couple of days after. So it's the kind of thing I have to be careful of. And now in the last month, I'm having an issue with my hip. I don't, I'm hoping it's not my hip joint, but friends of mine told me, I'm walking with a little bit of, not a limp, but they see that my gait is a little bit different. And I asked my girlfriend this week and she said, yes, there is a bit of a gait um, issue. So I've got three things right off the bat. I have a tendon issue here from lifting kind of heavy uh, weights. So I work out with all these injuries. So I'm not doing running anymore. I'm not doing 40 push-ups. Um, and I'm not, you know, I can't do uh, things that are going to injure me. Um, when I bend down uh, to do gardening, uh, if I stay down in a real deep squat, my getting up is kind of difficult after about a minute of being in a position like this. So, but I'm still working out, I'm still in great shape. So I want to show you a kind of workouts that I do and the workouts that I get around. So for my Achilles, I don't know when I don't want to do a lot of impact stuff. So I used to do jumping jacks like this, which is going to impact my Achilles. So instead of doing 
anything impact like that, I'm going to do my jumping jacks without jumping. And I can still get my heart rate up super fast without jumping. Doesn't bother the Achilles. So I've adjusted that. And for most of my clients that are over 65, same thing. They don't do jumping jacks, but they'll do this kind of jumping jack, or I'll have them do high knees. And actually, you think that's quite easy, but you'd be amazed at the number of people that can't clap while the knee is up. And that's because they have balance issues uh, or no coordination. So there's one thing to solve that problem. With regard to my hip, I'm not sure. I've got to probably go in to talk to my doctor about it. Um, I don't feel that lunges are bothering me right now, but if you're going to do lunges, which I recommend because all of my clients, they do squats, and some of them do lunges, but um, if you want to have less uh, pressure on your knees, instead of doing a lunge, a forward lunge, Jeff Cavalier, my favorite trainer online and phys physiotherapist, he said, do reverse lunges. Now he'll do them with a barbell on his back, but he's he's teaching younger people. He's not necessarily teaching seniors. So the, the reverse lunge has a lot less pressure on your knees. You're still getting your quads going and your glutes. Okay, so that's one of the things for people who have bum knees. Almost all my clients have one bum knee. Okay, for um, push-ups. When I'm doing push-ups, I don't have a place here where I could really do it, but I go on a lower platform where I'll have my clients do that, and they'll, I'll have them push off of their washing machine or their, their table. Now, I can do a lot of these, and that doesn't bother me. I could do probably 40, 50 of those easy. So I'm still getting work in front of my shoulders, chest a bit, and tricep. So that's a weight around doing push-ups off the floor, I'll still do more off of the bench. And if you do them slow, you're going to get a lot out of it, with your, with your um, triceps and your chest. Um, the hip issue, I still don't understand if it's a hip issue or if it's uh, muscular or some other area in their hip flexors. I'm not exactly sure. I've got to go and get it checked out. But we still walk 20 minutes. We're going to walk another 15 minutes back. So I'm going to shoot a little short video of the kind of important things that Kathy and I did this morning. And there's about five or six different exercises. And this is, you can wrap this up in like less than 10 minutes if you do two sets. So I'll go right into it and I'll show you the kind of things that we do. So the first one, and I have this set up with bands. I just bought these bands from China. I'm just trying them out. These are from China also. So you can get these on AliExpress. Uh, it takes two, three weeks sometimes to get them, but they're pretty inexpensive. These bands are my favorite with the handles, but you can only get them in Canada and they're from Fitness Depot. These are the best quality bands you can get anywhere in North America. I've tried them all, bought them up, some on Amazon and they're crap. These have lasted me minimum two years and I'm training, but for people that bought them from me, three years, and sometimes longer if you don't have them out in weather or they, they're protected, the, the latex is inside. So this is good equipment. Maybe at some point if I put my, uh, my email on uh, this video, you can contact me and then I can tell you exactly how to get them. So here's the first exercise, which is multi-muscle, and I've done it in another video before. And you can set the band up, up high here. I just happen to have it high. And it's named after a 85-year-old client who um, <laughs> sort of did this by accident. We used to just do a row like this. So with a row, you're getting this muscle, the bicep, front of the shoulder, the lat. And because you're being pulled forward, you're getting all of your core. And you're in a squat position, so you've got your glutes and hams tight and your your um, and your quads so here's the exercise seven muscle groups your squat and your row squat and row squeeze your shoulder blades 
when you bring them back. So this is probably one of the best exercises, and you'll see this rowing machine in the gym where you're sitting down. Well, if you're sitting down, you're not going to get all this work in your legs. So whenever I see that in a gym, I'll stand over the bench and do that. And I'll go like this and people are looking at me like I'm crazy, like I don't know what I'm doing. But that's what I developed. So you get in a squat, you've got this muscle working here like that, and you're rowing. So that's the first one. Next one I'll do, this is kind of light for me. Kathy did this this morning. And this is a lighter band, which is, you know, not as strong as I am in biceps. So I have the biceps up here like this. This is way too light for me. So if you don't have a couple of sets of bands, I just take it, take one, and then this is enough. That's a good tension to do 10 reps like that. Okay? So that's bicep right there. I'll switch it up, one will do the back of my arms, elbows here, tricep, push down. Now you can do it with an underhand grip or an overhand grip, like this. Both of them hit the try, but in a little bit different fashion, okay? Now, I told you I have a, a tendon which has been bothering me for four months, and a couple of my clients have the same thing. So if I'm, I'm going to do that, this was hurting my right arm. So what I do is I put them offset, so this is lighter tension, and that helps that tendon in my right arm, and I'm right-handed. And I'm supposedly stronger on that side. So that's how I adjust it while this tendon, hopefully it heals. So the other tricep exercise I do is I do a push away. I go like this. I don't move my elbows at all. They're angled up a little bit. Right now that hurts my tendon. So I'm going to adjust that. This is longer now. Now it doesn't hurt. So there's tricep and bicep, easy to hit. So the next one, which I did a video prior to this, called the rack, which Kathy was nice enough to be the model for me, and we were doing it on a bench. But I also showed it standing up. And the reason I started working with this exercise is because I had so many people that couldn't raise their hands straight up like this. They have frozen shoulders or some kind of uh, shoulder impingement and they're like this. They think they're straight up and they're not. So what I did is I took a band like this. You can do it with handles without and you come down like that. And that forces their, their arms to go straight up in the air. But in the process, you're getting your forearms worked your triceps are working, the front of your shoulders are working, and when you come down like this, you're getting the top of your pectoral muscles, or for my women clients, I say it's going to keep your boobies up. And when you come down far, the lat muscles get involved. So this is a nice exercise for about five different muscle groups. So you've got forearm, thighs tight, front of the shoulder, lat muscle, top of the boobies. Okay, so this one, I like to do it on the bench because a lot of my clients when they're doing this, they'll start going with their body weight and that takes away from the exercise. You want to keep your body from not moving. And when you do that, your core tightens up also. Okay, so this, is, this exercise and the row, the squatting row, that's all you have to do really. You could skip the bicep and tricep and do these two exercises and you've hit almost all the muscles in your body. The other one, the core, the last couple, which everybody almost hates core. And, and most of my clients don't want to get in the ground. So I have them do their crunch like this. I used to do it like this, but they're rounding their back so much and I've read so much material. I've had a lot of spine experts say we don't want to round our back that much but when you're doing a crunch your back gets rounded so I've just turned it away and I can't go down as far because there's a lot of tension on this so I have them do the crunches like this I have them blow out and squeeze at the same time and 
that's getting all of this, plus you're getting a little bit of work up here. The last one is for the obliques. So I'll have them stand in a position like this with a band, not too heavy. This is too light for me, but just for, you know, for demonstration purposes, I have them stand in a position like this, a tiny bit of a squat, and you just go like that. Turn your head so your body turns with it. And what's that? That's working all of this, but it's working this oblique more. This one isn't doing the work. This one is doing the work, and this is doing the work. Plus, you're getting some work in your, because your arms are stiff. You keep your arms stiff like that. If you turn around, then you're going to get the other oblique like that. So that's what? One, two, three, four, five exercises. And you can get that done. If you work at it, it'll probably take you no more than five minutes. Rest for a little bit, maybe do another set of squats or a set of lunges and some side leg lifts, which Kathy and I do all the time for this area. Rest for a minute, then do another set. 10 minutes, that's all it takes to keep yourself in shape. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, you know, subscribe to my channel if you liked it. Thanks and have a great day.